Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Dear students, uh, the topic for today's discussion is the rheumatic disorders in children. And uh, you must be aware that this is, there are a lot of them will be concerning with the most important and the prototype of these disorders, and that is juvenile rheumatoid arthritis which is now changed this nomination as juvenile idiopathic arthritis. I am Professor Akhmad Laik from the Pediatric Department at Dr. Sahil Medical College, Lahore. The objectives of my lecture are few. Please uh, note them because at the end of them we will review the lecture objective whether we have achieved them or not. First of all, I want each one of you to understand the importance of this disease entity, the enormous morbidity that it causes, and the terminal mortality which may happen in a number of cases. How do we diagnose and label someone as having JIA? So there are definite diagnostic criteria for this purpose. How do we work them in the laboratory and what is the importance of each lab investigation? How do we manage them? We should know the principles of management. We are using drugs, physiotherapy, nutritional advice and surgical intervention. All of them are part of the management which we employ. What is the terminal outcome in these patients? On a long-term basis, we need to follow them, including medical issues as well as psychosocial issues. We'll take each one of them one by one. First message that I want to convey to you is that a very simple message and that is children they also develop arthritis and they suffer very badly. Unfortunately, because of the lack of knowledge on the part of parents and the medical community. So, this simple message from the Arthritis Foundation, an NGO in saving the lives of children is that please consider that kids and young children they also can be victims of this very important disease that is arthritis. So keep this in your mind in your future life. An important thing to consider is that look at this young boy. He has been complaining to his parents about pain in his knee joint, limping, unable to move normally, but he was taken as a case of some trauma to the lower limb. Well, no doubt that children, they play, they suffer minor injuries, they get minor joint and bone problems, and they are considered as having some joint trauma. But remember that it could be a patient of arthritis. We should not forget that. And there should be no prompt delay. We can recheck the patient after one or two days and see any signs of improvement or not, and then confirm whether it is arthritis or not. These words are used interchangeably, like rheumatic diseases, like connective tissue disorders, like collagen vascular disorders. Now, what are these? These are all chronic diseases with so many remissions and relapses in the long course of illness. These disorders, they are all multi-systemic, which means that apart from the involvement of the joints and bones, they infect all other tissues of the body, like blood vessels, 
like CNS, like muscles, like metabolic issues. So they are all multi-systemic disorders and do not consider them as only confined to the bones and joints. These are all autoimmune to begin with, which means that the body recognizes the structures in the bones and joints as non-self and mounts an immune response against the structure and thus the disease process starts and then progresses. These disorders are genetically determined. That is, we have genetic predisposition based on specific histocompatibility leukocytic antigen alleles. So frequently the disease runs in families. Of course, there is the important influence of environment, which means either the viruses or the radiation also have a role to play, but the major part in this disorder is genetic predisposition and familial nature. These disorders should not be taken as very benign. That they cause little harm, no, they cause a lot of harm and they are not short-lived, they continue for months, years and decades and sometimes the whole life. And we could not offer a cure. There is no cure possible. So all what we have to do is provide care for these patients because that would be relieving the most of the suffering in the patient. Now that is a simple sketch of a, di of a joint showing a proximal bone, the distal bone, the articular ends and the structure of a joint which shows that there is a joint capsule, there is a synovial membrane lining, there is a joint space and little bit of joint fluid. So that is all essentially present inside a joint. We said it very clearly that the this disease begins as an autoimmune phenomena in which the synovial lining of the joints is taken as a non-self tissue by the body's immune system. So the next thing would be that the body immune system mounts a response against this important tissue as synovial lining. Now this immune response is both T cell and B cell mediated. It ultimately leads to inflammation of joint with all the five components like pain, redness, swelling, loss of function and decreased activity. So inflammation of joint follows in the terminal stages when the disease is very much advanced then the synovial lining becomes hyperplastic and hypertrophied. Presence of so many inflammatory mediators inside the joint tissue causes damage to the articular cartilage and ultimately the mobility is dramatically reduced. Initially because of pain and then because of damage to the articular surfaces. The joint becomes less and less mobile which is a primary function. And finally in the advanced stages there is joint fibrosis and excessive calcification inside the joint. We also know that the females as a general rule are affected more frequently than males. The children in the age group between 1 to 5 years are mostly affected and sometime we have been observed that one rheumatic disease frequently changes to another rheumatic disease. So these 
rheumatology disorders, they behave as a group. They share clinical features, they share lab investigations, and they share the natural course of illness. And sometimes one illness, rheumatic illness, may change over to the next illness. Now, what are the target organs? We already mentioned that these target organs are the joints and the joints having the synovial lining. Now, this is showing you a picture of a joint. For comparison purposes, it has got a normal joint and a diseased joint. What you observe is that in the knee joint, there is edema, the redness extending even beyond the joint. So, these are the essential criteria for labeling a patient having arthritis, which means inflamed joint. So, joint swelling is must as a result of fluid in the joint space, which can be demonstrated by various clinical skills. So, these two are very important. Patient having pain, patient having redness, patient having limited movement, patient having limited, uh, uh, having a joint swelling, they're essential to make it as arthritis. Or sometime when the joint swelling is not visible, then we use the criteria of marked painful joints with limited movements as having arthritis. And if you clinically press them with two fingers, you find joint tenderness. So these are the features of arthritis in a particular joint. And the joint feels warm to touch. The prototype is juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Now, currently, is now labeled as juvenile idiopathic arthritis. So, this is defined as an entity in which there is chronic joint swelling, pain with limited movements for at least six weeks duration. Then we have to exclude patients having other joint problems. The duration should be minimum of six weeks the patient should develop these symptoms before 16 years of age <coughs> and we do not have a well-defined known etiology of these cases. So that is what we call as juvenile idiopathic arthritis. So what are the diagnostic criteria? Again, look at the hand of the patient. He has swollen joints of both hands, age less than 16 years, having involvement of one or multiple joints, duration more than six weeks, and the clinical feature may fall into one of the three known types. One is called polyarthritis, in which the joint involvement, the number of joint involved is five or more than five, maybe small, maybe large, medium, medium. All joints can be involved. It can be oligoarthritis once the joint involvement is four joints or less than four joints, maybe one, two, three, or four. We call it as oligoarthritis. And the third category is systemic. Once this disease presents as a systemic disorder, with fever, with systemic manifestation, and the joint manifestation are minimal or may happen after months and months of fever. And then patients start having joint symptoms. So we have three clinical types. In that case, before laboring a child having DIA, we must exclude other joint involvement other diseases cause the joint involvement. So what are the signs and symptoms of juvenile idiopathic arthritis? First, 
articular symptoms and second symptom outside the joints so that tells you what is possible with the joint involvement it may cause joint swelling joint pain joint stiffness or joint become very frozen joint gelling like a gel that is most patient complain that once they are have been take a complete night rest sleep in the early morning they have difficulty in moving their joints early morning stiffness is very diagnostic and very characteristic or sometimes label as gelling after periods of inactivity there can be joint warmth there can be limitation of joint movements and there can be limping gait which is painful and tragic gait so these are important feature clinical feature relating to the joints feature outside joint are very important like general symptom like weakness like lethargy like pallor like poor appetite like uh, low grade fever like growth disturbances like general disturbances like the poor weight gain poor height gain or localized joint involvement the feature in the skin are important and some children they have got enthesitis which is nothing but at the site of insertion of tendon and ligaments the joint capsule of the bone you find inflammation at that inflammation which is of course outside the joint but is called enthesitis polyarticular which means that joint involvement is five or more joints and this may involve the knees ankle wrist finger elbows and shoulder and they have constant pain we have a posioarticular or oligoarticular arthritis in which the joint involvement is either four or less than four joint with the first six month of the onset and usually the large joints of knee ankle elbow and wrist are affected and the small joints are less commonly affected in this category look at this young girl who is standing a bit differently what do you observe you see that the 18 month old girl was previously behaving normally but now she is having some much flexed posture at the right knee joint and the knee joint is swollen she has a limping gait no doubt that she has arthritis of the right knee joint you compare both side to be clear of your diagnosis some children especially in the category of oligoarticular they have involvement of the eyes what you observe you observe that there is congestion is called ciliary congestion there is congestion at the outer margin of the iris at the level of ciliary body and their redness all over this need to be differentiated from the conjunctivitis causing redness in congestion so this is circum iridal around the iris in the area of the site ciliary body is all red it has got a immune basis and with a frequent important finding in gia some children they have a rash macular rash diffuse rash on the skin on the trunk and the face is one of the important differential for a macular eruption in a young child some children they present as systemic disease variety which mean there is some to 10, 10 to 20% patient with gra they behave like that they develop fever high grade for many many days and weeks and months they develop a rash they develop lymph node enlargement they develop enlargement of liver and spleen maybe pericarditis maybe pleuritis and the characteristic feature is that the joint involvement as arthritis is not seen clinically for even months they don't develop angioveitis so they are still if the patient develops joint involvement this still is compared to the diagnosis of systemic onset 
JIA. Well, all joints are not having, not to be diagnosed as JIA. The other cause of arthritis, which means it could be rheumatic fever. Typically, the rheumatic fever arthritis is a flitting arthritis, which means the joint pain and swelling affects one joint couple of days and weeks and then it settles down and moves to the next joint the next joint it doesn't cause any joint damage so the rheumatic fever causes arthritis which is splitting in character large joints are involved you can have pyogenic arthritis maybe even one or two joints are involved localized pain redness swelling limit the movement are there but just one to two joints with marked leukocytic leukocytosis Tuberculous arthritis, maybe one or two joints having somewhat insidious subacute onset. Tuberculous arthritis with history of contact. They may be having other rheumatic disorder like SLE, which we will learn in a moment how does it behave. It can be reactive arthritis, that is, patient having some viral infection, some pharyngitis, some diarrhea, then followed by involvement as of a joint as is swelling, but then it settles down within a couple of days. Post infectious arthritis, maybe patient having dysentery, patient having UTI, sometimes they are having features of arthritis following that acute infection is over, but again it settles over one to two weeks' time and then it settles down. Patient having chronic hepatitis. Because of autoimmune nature, they may have joint involvement. Patient having inflammatory bowel disease, on the basis of autoimmunity, they have features of arthritis. But again, other features like inflammatory bowel disease, features like diarrhea and fistulas and abdominal mass, that can differentiate. And some children, they have hemarthrosis, which means they or traumatic, which means either they have uh, trauma to the joint or they have hemophilia with sudden joint swelling, which is wrongly interpreted as arthritis. It can be either trauma or a brain disorder or like hemophilia. SLE patients also have some time coming in the pediatric age group and I have given some of the important features of SLE for you to remember it quickly. Number one, they got skin feature of a malar rash on the cheeks, on the bridge of the nose, a discoid rash, which is frequently photosensitive. Any patient jab bahar dhoop mein expose hota hai, to maa khud bata di hai, jab dhoop mein jata hai, to iske gaal aur muu saare laal tuk ho jate hai, they will have itchy rash, scaling rash, aur jab wo andar rehta hai, rash disappears and is not apparent. They get poor ulcer that you see in the photograph. Niche wali photograph mein aapka nazar aare ke patient ke oral cavity mein in the region of the uvula, palate and shelf, soft palate, you find multiple small ulceration which are due to a SLE. Patient usually have got joint involvement that we just learned so the joint involvement is usually two or multiple joints are there. They develop involvement of the serous linings of the body like pericarditis with effusion, pleural effusion and maybe ascites due to peritoneal effusion. The CBC shows they have features of hemolytic anemia, wounds positive. They have leukopenia, low white cell count and they have low blood cell count. They sometimes have seizures or psychosis as a result of serious involvement of various blood vessels. They develop renal function, which is a very important part of their management. The renal vessels, they are damaged because of the SLE. They develop protein urea and disturb deranged renal function like raised urea, raised creatinine level. So this condition can be diagnosed by from the lab test by performing anti-nuclear antibodies, anti-double-strand DNA antibodies, anti-Smith antibodies, 
anti-cardiolipin antibodies. All these antibodies are diagnostic profile in SLE cases. Now let's come back to the GIA. How do we investigate? First of all, remember that all the investigation can be normal. No diagnostic investigation is there in patient with GIA. We take help from them, but no investigation is must or essential. I give example of CBC, may be totally normal or may show normochromic, normocytic anemia with either TLC normal or low or differential diagnosis, platelet count usually normal or maybe low. We get raised acute phase reactant indicating inflammation like raised DSR usually more than 100, CRP markedly raised and ferritin markedly raised. Rheumatoid factor, again positive in some cases, anti-nuclear antibody may present in some cases of geometric or GIA and the radiographs indicating joint effusion and joint damage will show in the moment. So these are essential investigation to work up a patient of GIA, but please remember that labs do not have a clearly diagnostic role in these cases. Patient may have totally normal investigation, but still having GIA based on clinical parameters. So what complication of this can ensue? Complication may arise due to disease or due to treatment. Let's see orthopedic complications like contractures, dislocations due to disease or due to damage to the joints, scoliosis and a shortening of limb. If one joint is permanently affected, then the growth would be minimized and there will be shortening of limb. So these are orthopedic problems that we see. Eyes, yes. Many children they develop damage to the eye because of the inflammation in the ciliary body, uveitis, iridocyclitis, causing eye damage. Psychosocial because the long standing disease and patients are debilitated, which are a patient kai kai move ni karte, hilte nahi hai, sidya ni charte, bathroom in ko bhot problem hoti hai, school ni jate, ughar pe rehte hai, they have lot of psychosocial problem for the patient and for the family, which can be psychosocial as well as economic. Anemia, because of the normochromic, normocytic anemia, so frequent accompaniment. Sometime the disease start with one rheumatic disease and then change over to the next one. So again, a trauma for the patient. Once they use many drugs like steroid in these patients, they cause untoward effect, which are harmful to the body. When you use steroid for a long period of time, they are definitely harmful. Then we have drugs like NSAIDs, drugs like methotrexate, so many drugs which of course their own side effect. This is a picture showing what does the meaning of the word iridocyclitis, which means iris, silly body, and the uveal tract. These are inflamed because of autoimmune phenomena. What do you find? Number one, iris is very angry looking, swollen, discolored, irregular pupil, and inflamed eyes, red eyes. So these are important feature in GIA, and it is a routine that all children with GIA should have a routine eye examination throughout their disease every six months with the help of slit lamp examination. This is the x-ray of the joint showing what goes wrong. On one side you find a normal joint with a clear cut joint cartilage, joint space, once the fluid accumulates, the joint space enlarges. Right? You see in the B diagram. 
once but the joint space is enlarged but after the disease has been present for a couple of months and year the joint space is reduced the articular surface of the articular ends is damaged irregular and you find osteophyte formation that different arrows are showing so now the disease is getting advanced gradually the harmful effect would be if the disease is advanced at the articular ends the patient may not be able to make use of these joints again more and more advanced picture showing that is a complete obliteration of the joint space irregular articular ends and sclerosis and ultimately fusion of the articular ends well how do you approach these patients i said there is no cure do not expect a cure and we should educate the parents on the importance of comprehensive management don't tell them that there is a cure they should be thoroughly educated both the parents and the patient himself with a broad based approach which means that the central role is played by the pediatrician who manages the patient thoroughly completely but he takes his help from different specialists like rheumatologist like physiotherapist like ophthalmologist like dietitian like psychologist like orthopedic surgeon all have their very important role to play and we know them very well rheumatologist for using newer drugs and for guiding the overall therapy in these patient with medicine physiotherapist to help these joints move ophthalmologist for the important eye complication like iridocyclitis dietitian for the proper dietary advice to maintain a good health psychologist for various psychological issues that may arise and when advanced orthopedic problem you need the help of surgeon to help us for the treatment no cure but we have safe and effective medication to help control the disease process we cannot completely cure them we just want to give them adequate care our purpose are of using the medicines are we want to decrease inflammation which is basic reduce inflammation reduce the pain and swelling of the joints keep the patient mobile he should try to remain active and be able to perform daily activities as per normal routine try to minimize the damage to the joints and improve the quality of life so we have these group of drugs which are used in these patient like ansaid corticosteroid intraarticular injection dimard disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs and then we have biologic agents what ansaid are we used we used preferably preferably we are using drug like naproxen ibuprofen intermethacin and diclofenac sodium sometime we there will be little difference between these four drug which are used recommended in children but again we have to use with a smaller dose increase the dose and sometime sometime we use even two in an set but very rarely these are anti inflammatory drugs we use corticosteroid orally like prednisone or injectable like methylprednisolone and sometimes we use intra articular corticosteroid like tramsinolone and methylprednisolone solumedrol and dapamedrol are being used we have disease modifying anti rheumatic agents like methotrexate like sulfasalazine like hydroxychloroquine so these are all drugs which are used in this category they modify the underlying disease process and then we have the 
various biologic agents. These biologic agents are used on the basis of the immune basis in which we want to overcome the tumor necrosis factor. Some of them are like intercept, rituximab, and others, tocizumab, and others. NSAIDs, I've already mentioned them, but their very important hazard is that they produce certain important side effects like damage the gut mucosa in the small in the stomach, they may cause perforation, they may cause hemorrhage, they may cause renal damage as well, long term basis. So sometimes we use one drug, sometimes we use gradually increase the dose, or sometimes we use like two drugs. So of course, the very important drug, they relieve the pain, they relieve the stiffness of the joints, and pain feels much better. But then we have to use it over long periods of time. We have another group of drug called COX inhibitor, cyclooxygenase inhibitor, working on the, on the prostaglandin pathways. They are selective COX inhibitors which are utilized. Corticosteroids are very important anti inflammatory drugs. We have to use with the lowest possible dose, low possible dose, with gradually increasing the dose or tapering the dose because they have to be used for months and years. We start really with 1 to 2 milligrams per kg per day. We usually give these drugs on alternate day because they have got a growth suppressing effect which can be minimized. So in children, frequently, when you use them on long term basis, we use these drugs every alternate day to minimize the growth suppression. Sometimes you have bridge therapy, sometimes we use as a oral therapy, or injectable therapy, and sometimes local intra-articular therapy. Depomadrol can be injected. And sometimes in very advanced cases, we use as a pulse therapy with methylprednisolone over three to five days, and then switch over to the oral therapy. Remember that the long-term use of steroid is very harmful. It will affect the growth and the height, it may cause them Cushing syndrome because over hyper adrenalism is immunosuppression. The patient may develop fulminant infection, patient may develop diabetes mellitus because of the harmful effect of the corticosteroids, may develop osteoporosis, may develop superadded infections, may develop cataract. So a regular eye check was very important and may develop weakness of muscle because of the steroid-induced myopathy. But remember, all these effects need monitoring. DMARD, we have already been talking about like methotrexate, like 10 mg per meter square every week. I teach the patient that you have to take this drug Just, we have sometimes we have to reduce the oral dose we have to use the intramuscular route or subcutaneous route, and we also use folic acid to prevent folic acid deficiency problems. We have to monitor the CBC and the liver function test. The drug is not used alone, but always in combination with NSAID or steroids. Other drugs, other than methotrexate, we use are penicillamine, hydroxychloroquine, sulfasalazine, cyclosporin, gold, minocycline. But the most important drug is to use the methotrexate. We have certain biologic anti rheumatic agent which suppress the inflammatory pathway acting against the tumor necrosis factor. TNF alpha inhibitor, like it has set. IL1 and IL6 inhibitor that are going to use. Rituximab injection can be given subcutaneously or double infusion can be given against the all working as against anti mono antibodies. Well, I will remember that G rheumatic, juvenile rheumatic arthritis has got many symptoms feature other than joints. So we have to look after them, like pubertal problems, like pericarditis, myocarditis, endocarditis, like effusion in the pleural space, like pulmonary fibrosis, like hepatitis, and like renal damage hematuria. All these are extra articular 
disease manifestation which need to be monitored and managed accordingly. The treatment is that other treatment is physiotherapy is very important because you want to prevent prolonged bed rest and immobilization, keep the muscles strong, give them good range of movement, improve the balance and cardiovascular fitnesses. We need to be send these patients to ophthalmologist for regular eye examination because they may not develop uveitis and if so, should be immediately treated. They require nutritional therapy like proper calcium intake, vitamin D intake because they develop osteoporosis very quickly. Good protein intake is must. We need to send them to orthopedic department, orthotic department for various splints and support devices to keep them mobile, keep the joint in normal position and when the pain is very severe, then some sort of thermotherapy like heat treatment, hot compressor, massage, all is needed for these patients. Outcome. I said that there is no cure. The disease continues, continues over decades, years and months. So it has been found out that almost 50% of patients who start the disease in the children, in the childhood, they have got a GIA below, before 16 years, they ultimately become adult rheumatoids. The disease does not end there. It continues throughout their life. So the bad prognostic point are that if the very young age, patients start having features of rheumatoid arthritis. Patients develop eye complications, the prognosis is guarded. Patients having rheumatoid factor positive disease. Only 10 to 15 percent patients have this disease. The remaining are rheumatoid factor negative. When patients develop spine disease or hip disease, it has a bad outcome, bad prognosis. In some children, they got a systemic disease to begin with. And then they develop joint symptoms. Again, this has a bad outcome regarding their long-term morbidity. Thank you very much for your very patient listening. I hope you will read the topic again and we'll learn more about it. Thank you very much.